It's the 31st annual Buena Vista Logging Days at the Buena Vista Ski Area north of Bemidji. Now look who's here. David's here with his camera. Listen, Mike. Perfect timing. Oh, but what do we have here? Okay, Mike. Is this is not your first year here? Evidently not. <laughs> Probably the thirtieth year. Well, no, not quite that many. But oh. we're, we're here to perform once again in the in the pancake house or the oh, machine right. shed, whatever you want to call it, and then at the Hall of Fame presentations. Good. I'll be there. I'll be looking forward to seeing there, David. Thank you, Mike. Well, young lady, I have to get a, a card so nobody throws me out. <laughs> Where are you from? Where? Are you taping Gone? or are you just taking a picture? No, he's taping. Oh you said, <laughs> I, I, I thought you said Wisconsin. I said, what the heck? You must no, have made the wrong guys. turn. We're just here for a day, for fun. Good for you. I've never been here before. Oh, you haven't? Get out, this is the first day you can get out of the house for like the last yeah. month and a half. So. Well, as Cabin Fever said it. Beautiful. Yeah, pretty much. Beautiful day. Mm -hmm. Who am I talking to? My name is Pam Goebel. Hi, Pam. Hi. Hi. Yvonne Hetland. And you're both from Gondrick. Yes, and who are you? Top secret. <laughs> <laughs> where are they going? They, they don't know where they're going.
Easy. Step up. Hi Suzanne. Hi. Who's next? Who's this next to you? Huh? You can't. You can't get out. Oh, stop. Huh?
Solway shoveling, and that's where I'm originally from the shovel. We're carving axes with kids in aid, and so the kids will come in here, they'll get to pick an axe and sandpaper, and then they uh, carve it smooth. And by the time they're done, they leave with a little uh, sump with uh, axe sunk in it. So each year we come up with a new uh, style of uh, axe, and the kids choose. Uh, the new one this year is this guy right here. And my wife found this particular axe uh, down in Benson. It's a type of broadhead axe. And so uh, we cut out about 50 of these, and this is the new axe for this year. <laughs> yep, we got kids up in the rumble seat. There you go. Okay, up there. gotcha. Yeah. They, oh, they love it up there. Had there been a room, I would have sent them up there. Yeah. Hi there. Hi there. What do you see from up yeah, there? They're up there working, yeah. yeah. Snow. So, how many uh, trees do you have to make a year? Up in the rough. Oh, I gotta get this. Oh, really? Really? Oh. Yeah, mine's super really? Good for Tom. So Grandma wants to talk you out of sand, you. huh? Because you go up and down, don't you? You're going with the grain. And then when you do the handle, when you do the handle, I'm going to walk in front of you. Like this, and then kind of move it. Otherwise, you'll create a flat spot. So you want it to be round. So you kind of move it like this as you sand it. I'm going to have trouble getting down. See that? Yeah, all the bumps are gone. Oh, it just took a second, didn't it? Yeah, I came out Thursday and cleaned it out, and I made that table. See the legs on the table? That's one of the doors from there, and I put the legs on it. And uh, uh, we were surprised because, see, our old card table died on us, and then we got here, and there was a new one here, and I'm like, I didn't have to make it, oh. but that's all right. That's cute, though. Hi. Yeah, just don't let her touch the stove or yep. melt the coat. <laughs> her fur hat was her. We uh, <laughs> had that happen just one year. It was a pair of snow pants for somebody. Or was yeah, it a glove? Oh, yeah. Check. See the handprint on that pipe? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, well once you put the glue in, it fills right in now, the edges. Right? Yep, you need glue when you get home, though. Otherwise, it'll break but before you get it home. Okay? Hand me your yeah. stuff. New York? John, John Mueller. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Chandler Arbor. Definitely took that, yeah. I'm thinking of that. That's great. I, I've been wanting um, the beaver for a long time. but you can sit on that side? Yeah, yeah, those two. Like, yeah, I like those. I want to say I'm loud. I'm going to say I'm loud. Yeah, they are. Yeah. But I, I, I am yeah. sure.
Oh, yeah. 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 Well, enjoy the day. You guys too. And enjoy your birthday. You bet. All right. You know, I have a china hutch at home that has uh, two of these in it already. Oh, is that right? Yeah. From I don't even know how many years ago. Oh, my goodness. But they made it through six years in the military, five different moves. Are you a clay pole? Okay. <laughs> Hard to doing? see when all you see is I, I, know. I, had, I, yeah. I guess a girl just here a few minutes ago and I had a 50 50 chance and I was wrong. So. <laughs> Freeze up.
off road. <laughs> one day but mostly it was in that 25 mile range did a fundraiser for hospice so. yeah they raised a little over eight thousand dollars so fun it was a good deal yeah he he went to a bull sale today oh okay we used to shear sheep for him years ago. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, back in the early 60s. What's your name? Trimble. Trimble? Over Medicine Lake. Okay. My mother taught school. I met you for years. Oh, years, really? Years. Okay. But her brother sheared sheep for every spring open. Sure. Thank <laughs> you. 
you guys stop in front of the log house? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, I'm Joe Dalby and I am from Bemidji here and my mules are Rufus and Rowdy and they're going to be six and seven years old and they're uh, doing really well today, it's even with the cold. Uh, these are the mules that went on the ride this spring down to Iowa. We did 380 miles in about three weeks with a covered wagon, did a fundraiser for hospice and so they're, they're my buddies. Okay, we're going to start out. The first thing we're going to do is just uh, join hands, and we're going to circle to the left. Just, just circle to the left. Just uh, kind of shuffle your feet, go around to the left, go around to the right. Go the other way back, go to the right. Then circle to the left. Circle to the left, go that way around. Circle to the left, go around. Everybody stop right there. Now, everybody turn and face your partner. First call we're going to learn, uh, you probably already heard the name, even though if you don't know how to do it, it's called a do side do. We're going to walk forward, passing right shoulders, then we're going to slide sideways back to back. Slide sideways back to back, and then take a step back and look them in the eye. Okay, that's a do side do. It comes from the French and it means back to back. That's what we're doing. Okay, one more time. Do side do with your partner. Just slide sideways, come back and look them in the eye. One more time for perfection. Do side do with your partner. Now I'm left. And a right and left, right and right, go right and left, you know. A hand over hand around, you know. And just about there, say, whoa, everybody should be home. Okay? Now, uh, let's have the, uh, we'll have the men show this. Want well, all the men to step into the best, make a right-hand star. Okay, turn that star all the way around till you find your corner. Do an alum and left. Come back, everybody is home. Okay, now I want the women to step into the middle, make a right-hand star. Put your right hand into the middle. Just put your right hand into the middle. Okay. And then, and then turn your turn your body so you're facing around. Now turn that star all the way around until you find your uh, turn it again. Uh, yeah, just keep turning it until I say not to. Okay. There's your corner. Do an alaman left and a right and left brand. And this time, when you meet your partner, do a right and left grand again. Just do it again, right and left, and right and left, and everybody should be home, okay? Now join up hands, circle to the left. Okay, now the ladies stop and the men make a right hand star in the middle. Okay, men, look for your corner. There she is, Alan and left. And a right and left, grand, grand, oh, right and left, you go. A hand over hand, you around, you know. Meet your partner, go around the bend. Now you just, you'll just have to show them how to promenade, guys. Just take them by the hand and walk them back home. Perfect. Now they have two couples, and that's the ones that have their backs to me or are facing me. Okay. The hip two couples promenade, go halfway around. The sides just move together so the hips don't have so far to walk. Okay? And then you take a step back. Okay, now the sides promenade, go halfway around. Just boys, you take them around. Okay, there we go. Join up hands, circle the left. Side door with your partner. Go back to your corner. Do an alum and left. And a right left grand. Grand go right and left you know. A hand over hand around you know. There's your partner. Take one step. Then bow to your partner. And 
rebound to your corner. Super going, nicely done. You are square dancers. You are square dancers. Nicely done. Good going, everybody. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now if you would like to do this, Tuesday night, First Methodist Church in Bemidji, we are having lessons. We'll take you just a little bit further. Okay, need a square out in the middle? We'll just keep going with this same music. Circles, let's go around that way. Now the ladies in and the men sashay, circle left go around. And the ladies in and the men sashay, circle left go around that way. Do an alamance, left to an alamance bar, forward two, and you make your star go right and left. And the men back in and you push them gals. Now shoot that star, turn through with your partner, look for your corner. Hey, Alaman left with your left hand. Here we go with a right with Fred. Brando right and left. Hey, Tina, girl, come around the bend. Take her hand, short walk. Now the head two comes in from the day. Halfway round you go. Come down the middle, square through, and you get me four. Then sway through. Side two couples. You lead to the right, circle up four. In the side turn, break, make a line of four. Up to the middle, you come on back. Just touch one quarter. All eight circulate. And the boy run around that girl. Star through. And a right left through. And the ladies lead Dixie style. Make an ocean wave. And the boys cross fold. Star through. Big line. Right, left, through, and you turn that girl. Then slide through. Do an alamant left. And a right, left, right. Oh. And promenade home. When you're there, you'll find your partner. And bow to your corner. Nicely done. Good, good going. Okay. Here's a singing column. I think it was from uh, 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 other West Coast one. That's really cute. Good job, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
It works. It works, okay. <laughs> So we have to grab a tight chain we got and come off and right up on there. We're at the Millyard River or wherever. <laughs> it's really easy to unload the logs with this method. And the uh, slaves, they were, they were pretty good sized ones. They had long bunks. These bunks are probably. 12 feet long. They would go probably up to 16 feet. Then they would do stakes. There would be stake pockets on the bunks and then they'd set wood stakes in. And then they were able to load within the stakes. It was more cumbersome. Uh, so we got the landing and so forth, but uh, the loads were there. Then of course the pulley loads. You see the logs on the sleigh that's loaded probably 15, 16 feet high or more. Uh, a lot of that was more for show than the way for actual use. Wendell. Wendell was over there, he's sitting in his logs oh. on this other sleigh that we unloaded. Oh! Oh! And, uh, Ready? The, uh, Ponds that he pulled the logs with are called skidding ponds. Uh, yeah, I'll choke on that one. Camera? You bet. Okay.
This is Jeff Clayton Poe with his little Morgan horse that he's breaking out. He put the bells on it the other day, and he just about had a rodeo. But golly, golly he's going good today, Jeff, and that. So I, uh, pretty proud-looking machine. You can go courting all over with that outfit. Thanks, Jeff, for all your help. Hold it up there, Scott. This is Scotty Anderson from Solway. He don't know much about horses, but he loves women. He's single. He's a trucker. He's got all the permits for hauling anything you want to haul. If you're looking for a guy who knows how to drive, even horses, Scott's the man. I don't know about that, <laughs> Thanks, Scott, for your help. This is Joe Dalby here with his black team of mules that he broke himself and that. And uh, if you remember earlier, about a year ago, well, it was the last April, Joe and Earl Speckman took this team and drove from Bemidji to Iowa. Fifteen days or better, I think they were on the road. And they had an experience. If you like to spend a lot of time on the road, you should take a trip with Joe and his mules sometime. Thanks, Joe, for all your help. Here we have a nice team of blacks that uh, fellow from owns a working horse harness shop in uh, Park Rapids, Dick Shower. Uh, hold it up, Dick, a minute. And uh, he's pulling what they call a go devil. And it, it'll go like the devil, wherever you want to go, it'll go like one too. Dick, uh, I took this team from Buena Vista one day down to Dick Shower. He wanted to see what they were like. And uh, we hooked them up to the corn binder and started cutting corn. I didn't bring them back home, darn it. He got them away from me. There is a beautiful team, guys. Thanks, Dick, for coming up and helping us out. Showbiz. Go into my introduction of what the logging industry has changed since back in the early 1900s or late 1800s. The first logging when people moved into this area was done to construct buildings to live in and to keep their cattle in. It was all material like you see this building built up. A lot of them very, very small. Uh, roofs were low. I have a friend that had built a house, just a replica of it back many years ago up in Gondrick, Minnesota. And he'd put a sod roof on that house. And it was very interesting because I'd heard about it, but I'd never seen one. But I want you folks to stop and think. There's two fellows in the back of the room here. Earl and Leonard Hemmerich, who have both been in the logging industry from the beginning. Their dad had a mill, and, and they could tell you probably more about logging than I can. However, I did get some logging experience when I was a te before I became a teenager, and then when I got out of high school, I ended up working for Leonard Dickinson. But if you look at the building construction trades now, there's not a lot of wood used, only in small houses. You look at the construction of 
in the industry of the commercial buildings, it's mostly concrete, metal, and sheetrock. Back in the early days, in fact, up until the 50s, everything was lath and plaster. Now, some of you folks think, well, oh, what's lath and plaster? Well, Tommy Benson, who was a friend of mine, he helped me with a little bit of this. And some of you people probably know more about it than I do, but I, I remember when Grandpa Ralph Dickinson had a lath mill. And he couldn't keep up with the demand for lath. Lath was used in building trades, it was used in garden markers, it was used in snow fence, it was used for everything. Today, I don't know if you can buy wood lath. I don't know of anybody that's making them. I know Russ Mitchell said there was a lath mill over by Elwood at one time. But just think, the lath were a little over a quarter inch thick, two inches wide, and four feet long. A, bu a, a bundle of lath was used to sheet up a house with a space in between them, and the bundle of lath actually covered a four by eight sheet of sheetrock. Now, if you were to do that. So think of the nails that went into that piece of wood. Our house that we lived in was that. It was lath construction inside, and it also had plaster. And so you th think about it now, and Tom Mensa, who was, was a sheet rocker, and a friend of mine who has passed away because it, was a plasterer. Now, first of all, came along the lath guy. He would put up all these little pieces of lath, and then would come the plaster. And he would actually take and mix this mud up. And as Tom told me, and I didn't understand it, but after they got all the lath up, they built a small scaffold up so that a guy would, uh, the guy that was doing the mudding or plastering would be able to reach the ceiling and walk around. Now, remember now, these, these ain't big sheets. These are, he had a hod, they call it, on his shoulder with mud on it, and you crawl. And you go up there and you wipe that mud on. And the mud went through the cracks between the lath, and it would fold over, and they called that a key. That was one of the keys, so it would not fall off. So I don't know that anybody can find a lath today unless it's rolled. But just think of the labor intensiveness of that, of nailing those individual laths on the ceiling, on the walls, on the outside, some of them. It, it was, it's hurt a lot of the logging industry because it took a lot of lumber for, to make the laugh. And I remember that Grandpa Dickinson, or Ralph Grandpa Dickinson, mill was over there where the uh, animal clinic is now. And he'd saw, bundle up, lots of laugh. And the other thing you don't see much in the wood industry anymore is shingles. Wood shingles. We had every building in our farm was wood shingles. The Maher family up here had a shingle mill. And we had some very nice cedar on our place. So my dad cut a bunch of cedar and we had shingles bundle after bundle after bundle. But there's another case where it wasn't a roofing nail, you used a shingle nail. And if you ever tore a roof off a house that had wood shingles on it, chances are you were going to step on a nail. <coughs> and that, it, it just automatically happened. But, you know, the logging industry has changed so tremendously from what I remember as a kid. So many of us that are in my era would make their living cutting 
and selling a few sticks of pulpwood to help them get their way through high school. My brother and I, we did the four years I went to high school and the one year afterwards that he went to high school. But, but at that time, I went to work for the mill. And then my son, he made his way through college logging. He cut off all my timber, but that's all right. He saved me going into that. But anyway, no, that, but now it's not that way anymore. We used to buy stumpage from the county with a popple for $2 a cord. And I think $4 for spruce. Now we can't even buy timber from the county. But, you know, it, it, it's a changing world. But just when you stop, think about it. Think about the houses that were built labor intensive back years ago. And the other thing I've been asked to talk about, and of course Leonard and Earl back there, they're going to laugh at me when I start to tell this, but when you're started in a sawmill, you usually started down low and worked your way up a little ways. Probably the most important man in the sawmill was a sawyer. The sawyer, he pretty much run the game. He usually got paid a bonus, I think, because he worked the kind in off everybody else. And he could tell you what, you know, he could make it or break it for you, for the owner. But we had uh, Leroy Graham was the can turner. Bill Forward was the sawyer. Reuben Bach was the setter. And I started out as a dogger. The dogger, what he did is he, he rode on the back of the carriage and held a log in the place with a lever and then the dog would come down and held a log. And that log would go by this big saw. But the setter never got to see the face of the log. Therefore, the one that controlled the cuttings of the log was the sawyer. And he'd always flash, flash a signal to the setter of what he wanted. If he wanted one inch, he'd put up one finger. If he wanted two inches, he'd put up two fingers. If he wanted three inch, that was three fingers. If he wanted four, that was four fingers. If he wanted five, that was five fingers. If he wanted six, that was a closed fist. Seven was a curved finger. Eight was these three fingers. Nine I never heard ever used in a sawmill. I never remember nine or 13 used in a sawmill. But if you wanted a 10, you held up to five and you wiggled your hand. If you wanted a 12 inch cord or a 12 inch can, Close your fist and wiggle your fist. If you wanted a 14 inch cord, that was seven. You wiggled a seven. If you wanted a half inch cord, that was half. But if you wanted one and a quarter, yeah, that was one and that's a quarter. And if you wanted somebody that was standing there and happened to watch or want to watch the sawmill operate, and the sawyer would look at you and he'd go, no matter will tell you, and Earl will tell you. You back away because when that saw comes back past the sawmill blade, it's just like buckshot coming off that blade, and it'll spray the whole room with buckshot. And that stopped the people from getting up too close. I mean, it was interesting. I enjoyed the sawmill. It was very fun. It was, a, it was hard work. But in life, what isn't hard work? I want to thank all you guys for coming. I can't thank the volunteers enough. They are tremendous. Earl and Leonard back there, they've been here since I couldn't tell you when. I don't know since I've been coming, and that's 20 some years. Uh, they are the ones that do the cross all out there, and, that, and they have a technique now that's just unbelievable. But uh, thanks. Thanks to everybody. Dick Shower there with that black team of horses that he stole from me. I, uh, I, you talk about a smoothie now. I'll tell you, I like them smoothies out of the cooler, but he he got a team of horses for me that was really nice. Well, we're all horse thieves, yeah.
Did you see Anna? No, Betty and Anna? They're, they're out there. They're gone. No. <laughs> oh, did you get them up to the barn? <laughs> they were Suzanne and, and uh, Liz's team are at Earl and Bot, and they were just a tremendous team. They still are a tremendous team. And uh, couldn't happen to a nicer guy that's gone. I, I just love to give him a bad time because he turned around and gives her a good I think at this time we'll do the introduction of uh, lumberjacks. Do we have any lumberjacks that are going to be introduced today? into the Loggers Hall of Fame here at Loggy Days read like this. Know ye all men by these presents, having trod the wilderness trails, suffered rain, cold, frostbite, mosquitoes, and other pestilences in the bygone days of oxen, horses, and sleighs, and having advanced from swamper to the exalted position of top loader, but mainly having been a good lumberjack with devotion to true woodsmanship and respect for the time-honored work ethic of giving a day's work for a day's pay. And further, having the courage to face that great scaler of time and deeds in the tradition of Paul Bunyan's loggers. Brad Candleberry is hereby benighted into the fellowship of tall timberjacks at the pleasure of the Buena Vista Logging Committee. As you can see, it's a very solemn ceremony. <laughs> Just about like being a knight. <laughs> <laughs> now we have to call you sir. Thank you. Do we have any of the Bolio family from uh, Cons Masonry on present? I'd like to bring your attention to the button that you received at the beginning of the show today. 
the button is in recognition to a family of horse lovers, and especially Con Bolio, who, if you told him he couldn't drive that team, uh, he'd be driving it, I'll tell you. He, he was good. Con was a construction person. He worked with cement a lot. And I'm going to screw up this word, but I'm going to try and say it the best I can. I'll let Todd do it. <laughs> Mesothelioma, I believe it is. Yes, what Khan has. And apparently he's not with us today, but uh, the, uh, the button is in his honor because he's been a big help to this celebration for many, many years. And Wendell has a special certificate here that evidently will go to Khan, a certificate of appreciation uh, in recognition of valuable contributions to Buena Vista logging days and the preservation of the log lumberjack heritage and horsepower logging in Minnesota for Con Bolio. That was a great ride, and we wish you were able to be here with us today. And we have another certificate of appreciation awarded to the family of Kent and Cherie Cito in recognition of valuable contributions to Buena Vista logging days and the preservation of the lumberjack heritage and horse-powered logging in Minnesota. Uh, and uh, this was a presentation for uh, the Cedos. Is anybody from the family here to accept this? None of the Cedos are with us today? Well, we'll get it to them, but um, I think we all remember Kent and Cherie, and uh, they're just another of the characters of logging days past that we miss once again this year. They were such a great help to the celebration. Wish they were here, too. As you remember, that Cherie sat back there at the corner and sold the novelties and the t-shirts and the caps, and she was a mainstay of seeing to that everything was taken care of on the business end of the log and haul days. Okay, I'd like to have special recognition to these following people. And I wish they would come forward at this time. Gary Cranker. Tom Benson. Steve Anderson, Steve Schusman, Scott Anderson, Brett Schusman, Jerry Notch, Jeff Claypool, Dick Schauer. Mike Hansen, and I know I'm going to miss somebody because I've already honored the hemorrhage boys because they're so special with their trip. But these are people that have been involved with logging days for many years. Most of them are Teamsters. A lot of them, some are volunteers only. But we've never... What the heck are you sitting there for? <laughs> Get up here, Jim Erickson. <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> you were in camel, we didn't see you. <laughs> these, these, where's Joe Dolby? He's out taking care of his mule. Are you trying to catch him? No. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody out and look for Joe. Uh, no, I, uh, 
these guys contribute a lot of time, a lot of hours. And if you didn't like riding on their team, must have been the sleigh because the teams are perfect. I tell you, these guys are just tremendous at doing what they do. And I'd like to see them all receive a certificate, starting with Mike Hansen. Come up here, Mike. Mike is a snooze what? Snooze Creek. Snooze Creek carving. Joe Dalby, would you come up front, please? Thank you. Eric Riker. Gerald Notch. And my adopted grandson, Brett Schusman. <laughs> Stephen Haywire Schusman. Haywire. <laughs> That's where I'm saving you front all the time. Leather punch shower. <laughs> He's always punching holes in leather. And the guy who was hiding back here, Jim Erickson, please. Now the guy that had those big black uh, things with the ears on out there, the big tall ears. <laughs> my, my granddaughter said you know, she was down at a fair, we we're doing some plowing down there, and she came riding in with my daughter and my wife. And, Oh, look at those big black rabbits. <laughs> anyway, throw it all me. Would you come over and get your certificate, please? <laughs> and then this guy with the gray horses, that we always want to train them brown because they, they, they glisten out there in that bright sun. Tommy Benson. And then uh, the capitalist and the guy that is always there for me whenever I have a problem, or he's always got the answer. Steve Anderson, please. And now don't any of you girls get excited out there that are single. Now this guy is really, really something. He's... You're getting another one? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. He's got more ways, more lines, more stories. But he's a heck of a good truck driver and a teamster. He's one of the floors of the horse team floors at the fair. Scotty Anderson. Thank you. And this other guy, he usually comes in on a wing and a prayer, but now he doesn't fly anymore very much. So we're going to give one to Jeff Claypool. And I'm sure I missed a few people, but I apologize for that. And I, uh, I really thank you people for being there, helping this show go on, and making it what it is. It's been a brutal year for weather, for us to get things done, but I hope you enjoyed what we had to offer today. I've been handed a, a certificate for someone else who's quite special, especially to this celebration. Wendell Knudsen has been here for many, many of the years of logging days, and uh, these days he's our main MC, and he's uh, really one of the main people that makes it all work. Wendell Knudsen, in appreciation from the Logging Days Committee. Thank you. I think we'll tune on Mike and Will. And you guys are, ex oh wait, no. Mike. What? Todd. We gotta go brush these guys down. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Right you. here behind Tom, some. Excuse me. And I think they're back at breakfast, some. Yeah. <laughs> Over there on breakfast, some. Yeah. For Todd. Can you get them? There's another one. They're right back there. You start oh, at that end, I'll start at this end. All right, that's a deal. Keep going. That's a deal. That's a deal. You know, they say that they say that if they keep pining for you, they'll get them. <laughs> Oh, 
Why not? You better brush him a few more times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try not to oh, in the eyes. You all get a double dose. Yeah. How about the guys back by the window? That's all right. I can't imagine it was really windy. Yeah, like it's been. I'm learning from him. I need to get a picture of those certificates before you go. No, just those in the frames. Oh, yes. Whatever you want to do is fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think Scotty wanted to sing this one. No! <laughs> I got horses to take care of. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Wendell. Thank you. Thank you.
nearby here, Suzanne. Right. This is for a $75 gift card from Buena Vista. And the winner... And the winner is Wyatt Andre. I don't know if Wyatt's here, but way to go, Wyatt. <laughs> Wyatt will be uh, notified that uh, he's won the prize from Buena Vista. We have some music set to go, I guess, from Liz and Diane and Suzanne. <laughs>
It's a nice prize. It's a woolen mills blanket. This blanket was donated by Bemidji Willow Mills to the woolen mills to uh, Buena Vista Day. They give them on just about every year. And the winner of this prize is being drawn by the one and only Marianne Dickinson. She is the mother of these three beautiful young ladies. I don't know. I didn't tell, think he'd ever get that cold and he need another blanket. <laughs> Earl Hemorrhage. If you weren't tired by 2 o'clock in the afternoon when the logging days were over, you could go to the Buena Vista ski area for the afternoon. Get on the slopes, if you haven't got skis, you can rent them. It started out cloudy in the morning. By noontime, the skies were blue. A perfect day for the logging days and skiing at Buena Vista. Mm -hmm. 